I can't lie. It's been quite a cruddy week. I've got my earphones in again. <laughs> um, because at some point soon the people who are coming to fix the broken swimming pool are coming and I know immediately as I say that you're like oh poor you Penny your life is so shit um, <laughs> but it has sort of been a crappy week and a lot of that I think stems from uh, look there was one great <laughs> well no yeah, it's been a crappy week. I've been feeling reasonably sorry for myself all week. And I guess a little bit of a part of that is that I, you know, um, I know that you're all getting a little bit bored with me being down about my kid being dead. And I know uh, earlier this week marked uh, a year and two months. 14 months since Josh died and I know that for many of you there's a kind of like hey get over it you know um so I and I wish I was over it too so make you know I remember years and years ago talking to a friend who had depression and he was like you know I'm I'm really bored of having depression like I know you're all really bored of me having depression, but you're not alone. I'm really bored of it. I'm really bored of feeling like getting out of bed is so hard every day and yeah, and, and feeling shit all the time. And I guess that is the same for me. It's like, uh, you know, the, uh, <laughs> not that there was a, a truckload of uh, fun to be had at the time, but like, you know, I know that it's getting a bit old and so I read about uh, anxiety at the same time and I know you're probably also a little bit bored of me talking about my anxieties but it uh, it made me think you know when you come across uh, an article so I read the mighty because often it has articles written by people who are sufferers uh, of various situations and similar disorders and there's an anxiety page and there was one and I don't know if the writer of this has anxiety it doesn't seem like it to me but the the the, uh, the title was 10 paranoias that people who suffer from anxiety will have right so um so <laughs> um let's go through them and see, because I look at this list, right, and it seems, they seem really logical and reasonable to me. Um, and not only that, I guess, I, also I've been watching Ricky Gervais this week. So, uh, you know, if you find me offensive, don't watch. <laughs> um, I am really pissed off, actually. I've been watching a ton of stuff recently on YouTube and things that was comedy from my kind of teenage early 20 years and we will get back to the 10 points of anxiety I promise you and and I made a comment actually on my Facebook group about uh, thinking that you know they would be a supremely good black adder season on Brexit but it made me realize at that point that we've missed kind of humor as a way of dealing with crapness and in fact we can't make jokes anymore because we're being sexist or racist or colonialist or part of the patriarch or not acknowledging our privilege and yeah I'm sort of done with that um, and you know so yeah you know so if I'm a you know maybe I am just an old codger maybe I've reached that stage uh, you know early that you get from geriatrics where they just say whatever the fuck they want and everyone just has to like go oh, auntie Dora don't listen Maybe that's me. I mean, do keep listening to me because one of the things here, of course, is that nobody likes me. They just tolerate me, which is, um, let's have a look here. Oh, it's number nine on the list of anxieties. Um, and of course, that is completely true. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that has um, sort of been come out this week is that, you know, 
uh, yeah, there's a ton of friends who think I should be over it now. A ton of family members who think I should be over it by now. I'll be moving on. Stop being morbid. Um, and also people who have opinions on the medication that I'm taking. Um, and, you know, and I know that I rave about my love of some of the medication and how much it's helped. But let me tell you, it has helped. And for those of you who think I take too much of the stuff, hello, Phil. Um, oh, it's lovely to know that you are watching me live. Anyway, uh, Phil is my sister. She is... Uh, my wonderful, glorious person fighting for freedom in the Middle East. Well done, Phil. She's a peacekeeper. Uh, well, she feeds peacekeepers. Well, she doesn't feed peacekeepers. She makes sure that peacekeepers have food um, and other stuff. Like, she buys stuff for them, but, like, not in an arms dealer sort of way. <laughs> um, so, anyway, here are the ten... So, yeah, so I've been listening to Ricky Gervais, and I've been going, yeah, you know what? You don't have to watch it. And actually, like, and there's somebody else watching too. Hello, whoever you are, make yourself known. Um, there is, um, yeah, so if you don't like me, that's okay now. And I guess that is one of the big things from Josh. So anyway, number one is there's been an ex accident. And of course, you know, uh, one of the things that people with anxiety do is assume that if someone doesn't pick up their phone... <laughs> like I was gonna phone them anyway um but if they are not are uh, they don't arrive when they said they haven't arrived there's an assumption that there's been an accident and it's lovely Phil that you are watching because of course um that time when Phil didn't pick up she had had an accident uh remember that Honda that didn't go around the corner like you'd been expecting Phil um and sort of like you know dragged herself to my house the following morning with burns from the uh um uh, from the airbag um that you know because you know it's a chemical reaction i did not know that until phil got burnt from an airbag um so yeah there has been an accident often you know um and particularly for those of you who have small parents you know uh, small parents <laughs> my mom is small but uh I means small children like i remember um my children had a favorite casualty you know chris still you know is grumpy with rosebank hospital for closing their casualty because that was his his favorite and he um he doesn't like this as much. Um, so, so number one, like for you guys who do not like have anxiety disorders, that is not a paranoia. That's a genuine concern. Like when it's when there has been an accident, worrying that somebody has been in an accident does not seem unreasonable to me. It seems like well, you know, when we look around and go, hang on a moment, you know. Uh, Shannon ran over one of our children once, like not in a, not on purpose, you know, it just traversed over the small child in front of the scout troop. Um, social services, it was a long time ago, you really don't need to intervene. Um, you know, Josh uh, fell downstairs and put his teeth through his bottom lip. Uh, he also fell down another set of stairs. I don't know what it was, but the stairs at the one particular school and knocked himself out. So, yeah, generally, there has been an accident. So, be clear, if you come stay at my house, I'm awake till you get home. Because it's not an unreasonable assumption. Like, when we have gathered enough data for something, we don't go, oh, hang on a moment, this is a paranoia. We go, no, there is data to support our position on this. So, yeah, it doesn't seem unreasonable that there's been an accident. And I worry about you all, all right? Fine. The next thing is, <laughs> um, I'm going to die. Again, um, you know, I know that um, I have potentially an unreasonable affection for cemeteries, which is weird because, you know, uh, <laughs> Josh was cremated and is sitting on the bedside table um but um we are all gonna die i hate to break it to you but we're gonna die yeah i think the pool people are here that's why the dogs are barking sorry 
Um, yeah, we are all going to die. So, you know, again, not unreasonable. The data tells us that 100% of people die. So, you know, doesn't seem like a paranoia to me. And um, the next thing, something will happen to my child. <laughs> Do I even need to say anything about that? You know, um, I mean, there's Josh. And then, of course, there is Chris of what is happening to him at the moment is um, how do the, the um, psychologists put it? Chronic acute, uh, chronic uh, anxiety after his brother's death and acute anxiety brought on from the fact that uh, he failed all the exams <laughs> in the year that his brother died. Um, again, doesn't seem unreasonable to me. Um, my children will be taken away. Yeah, I mean, that's more of a wish than a paranoia at times. <laughs> uh, no, I'm lying. Chris, actually, just this week, I'm sitting outside in the courtyard, and it's looking beautiful here because just this week, Chris put in a brand new watering system for me. So, so that is actually one that we can do. Like, yeah, I, it's not one that I worry about. Um, I remember as a child, maybe this is where my anxiety disorder came from. I remember from my ch uh, when I was a kid, my parents telling us that they could never get divorced because of who would take custody of the children. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. And they were like, no, we go like, you have to have them. No, you have to have them. No, you have to have them. No, I'm not taking them. You have to have them. So, you know, maybe a little bit of my anxiety came from that. Thanks, mom. Uh, no, that seriously isn't one I worry about. Um... I'm not good enough. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> I think we've had this conversation before. My earnings from being an author so far were one thousandth <laughs> of my husband's bonus this year in a particularly bad bonus year in the corporate world. But yeah, I have always struggled with, the, with knowing that I am not good enough. And I guess that's the comparative thing. You can look around. There's always going to be someone more successful than you. Uh, I, yeah, I am married to somebody who is more successful than me. Um, but there is, you know, uh, yeah, I think, I, I don't know that that's part of an anxiety disorder. Doesn't everyone have that? I mean, when you look around, there's always somebody who's doing better at what you want to do, you know. You know, I'm sure, you know, even like J.K. Rowling goes, well, you know, Shakespeare did better, Bible selling better, you know, so, I mean, and the Bible was an anthology, but you know what I mean. So that one doesn't feel, you know, again, like particularly unreasonable um, because, you know, the data tells us so. Somebody's giving me a thanks. Oh, hello, Sonia. Oh, you're so lovely. Hello. I saw a picture of you on Facebook in all your, in all your summer garb and it looked so lovely. And then I thought that must be a historical one, you know, like a memory that Facebook had brought up because it's cold as hell where you live. <laughs> um, so, you know, not being good enough. Yeah, that again, the data tells us so. Um, you know, so yeah, give me a thumbs up if we're all not good enough, you know. <laughs> That's my friend who's a Facebook uh, strategist, by the way. He says to me, like, yeah, Penny, you've got to go halfway through your Facebook thing. Like, give me a thumbs up, give me a love heart if you're loving this or you've just joined. Like, I feel like a complete twat doing that you know you know the thing is is that I don't think I'd really like J Ricky Gervais well more importantly I don't think Ricky Gervais would really like me if he met me um but I do think he's right about quite a lot of things um you know you know I don't know if he I mean he doesn't seem to ever feel like he's not good enough but maybe that's why he mentions why he's rich all the time because it's like a defense because I mean I do that I go I'm amazing um no, actually, I don't do that, do I? <laughs> I'm amazing at being anxious. Um, I, um, but, you know, but I do know that one of my defense mechanisms is like, I tell you I'm shit um, so that I can get it out there first so that, like, you don't have to, like, say it. <laughs> um, hi, Mandia. Oh, 
thank you for your love heart. Oh, what a good Facebook person you are. You're all amazing and I love you. And there's four of you watching and that I think is the most people have ever actually watched one live. Yay! Okay, so, um, so I am not good enough. I think, I, I don't know, I think that's probably everybody. Um, and again, you know, it, it's data backed, you know, so I, you know, so for me, it's like, you call it a disorder, I call it being a good analyst, you know, um, my con my partner will leave because I'm too much, you know, I, I do, I used to worry about this, um, but then I, you know, uh, discussed it with myself <laughs> in the dark closet, um, uh, <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Maybe you're saying, no, I'm shit at Facebook. <laughs> Let me get that in there first. Oh, <laughs> you're wonderful. I love you. Um, uh, my partner will leave me because I'm too much, you know. So I said to myself, self, he won't ever leave me because I'm at home with the dogs and he really, really loves uh, Snowy, which actually you can't see because he's busy I actually don't know what, I think he's hiding from the people who came to fix the pool behind the couch. He's a really, really good guard dog. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, he will never leave me because I have custody of the dogs. And the cat, he thinks, loves him more than uh, she loves me. But he is wrong. She just sits on his lap when he's watching TV. Well, I don't know why she does that. Probably just to hurt me because she's a cat and she can do that. But I know that underneath it all, she loves me more. And anyway, even if you had to take all those away again, I have custody of Lala, Phil's dog, who, uh, you know, lives with us while she is keeping world peace. Um, and so, um, and actually, I have secretly grown quite fond of because she's really good to cuddle when I'm feeling miserable because uh, she's very small. She's like a teacup dog. So she's sort of like a, um, like a shivering teddy bear. Um, she shivers a lot. Um, I like to think that's just because she's a shivery sort of dog, not because she's scared of cuddling with me. But it could be that because it could be that that links to um, one of the next one of the nobody likes me. They just tolerate me. Maybe <laughs> just tolerates me, you know, but that is one of the things that I um, worry about. So we can jump like that to number nine. Have we spoken about that already? I think we have. Um, nobody likes me. They just tolerate me. Yeah. I mean, you know. Um, yeah, um, my sister's going, oh my God, you like Lala. I have this on tape. Yeah, I actually feel she's really sweet. Like she snuggles up behind the backs of my knees when I'm lying um, on the couch, feeling sorry for myself. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I moved out of, uh, we actually have like an office at home, um, but Shannon, my husband, uh, his uh, work is really into like remote working. And in fact, most of his team, I think all of his team are not actually local. So he works from home uh, a lot now. And of course he is like, he just, he is, you remember like how Dilbert had meeting moths? I don't know, like he's a teleconference tiger. I don't know what you would call it. Um, <laughs> uh, Mandy is saying to Phil, like, can we make this our chat room? Oh, nice, nice. You see, it's just you guys tolerating me, not actually liking me. I'm just a way for you to connect. Um, anyway, so Shannon is like this teleconference. Tiger sounds too good. Like, I don't know, I'm gonna think of a, guys tell me, like what's an insect that begins with a T, you know? He's a teleconference parktown prawn. For those of you who are not South African, a parktown prawn looks like a cross between um, a cockroach and a cricket. And they're actually really good things to have in your garden because they're carnivores. They eat like slugs and snails and stuff like that, but they look really gruesome. And they, and there's two things. So one, if you try and like get rid of like one. So if you're trying to like be a good humane person and you try and move a park champ prawn, they let out this noxious smell, like the park town prawn, like the smell equivalent of like an octopus's ink, right? Except that you would not want to put this as an ingredient in pasta. I mean, yeah, no, you really wouldn't. Uh, not if even you were like into eating like, you know, scorpions and stuff or, you know, 
other weird things. Um, but so you, it's really difficult to help them if they accidentally get into the house. But they also do things like fall into swimming pools and things. So there you are swimming along and you come up there and there's this monster in your face. It's gruesome. Uh, um, <laughs> um, now my sister and Mandy are actually just having a conversation amongst themselves. Guys, it's my life. Go off and have your own life. No, don't do that because then you won't be watching and then Facebook will think I'm not popular and then they won't show anybody my Facebook live. So you have to stay on. You guys talk amongst yourselves because that'll be really good for the algorithm. Right. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you think that's great. Oh, I'm getting good at this, aren't I? Okay. Uh, next one. People are watching and judging me. Well, obviously. <laughs> Hello. You. Um, but it is actually one of the things I've been grappling with, grappling with in terms of not just, I mean, the Facebook Live, again, it's my strategy. I say it before you say it. Um, or people are sending all these like funny, laughy things. You're so sweet. I love you all. Um, and Facebook will love me now, which is more, actually more important, uh, which is probably why you tolerate me, not like me. But anyway, um, people are watching and judging me. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the things I found about this is like, I do find it. Yeah, bullied is the wrong word because, you know, I, 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 you know, I freely admit, you know, I, I chopped the privileged pile, sort of unapologetically, actually, you know, um, um, you know, I, I know that there's people out there um, who, you know, are having a shitter day than me today, but um, I still really like my house and the swimming pool when it's working. Hey, and Phil, we're finally having someone come in to fix that damn jacuzzi that hasn't worked for a decade. Um... Right. Um, so people are watching and judging me. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing that people are judging me for is one is that it's been a year and I'm still moping. And, you know, it's like you go, you know, I go and talk to the psychiatrist and he's like, yeah, you're never going to be fine. Like you need to make peace with that. Uh, eventually you'll get to a place where you can cope. Um, and I do sort of feel like if I had to like judge myself like from a year ago when Josh had been gone just for two two months. Yeah. I do feel like I'm coping better, but uh, a lot of people feel like I take too much medication and, and uh, it's one of the things that uh, I worry about myself because, you know, I take quite, you know, I have like underlying meds that, you know, anybody with mental illness will know this. So you have like the meds that you have to take every day, like when you get up, when you go to sleep, you set your clock and you just take the damn meds, right? So I have those, but I also have quite a lot of as needed meds and I find myself uh, more reliant on those than I would like to be. Hello Nickalulu! Ah, uh, it's so good to hear from you. Um, so yeah, I, but there's a lot of people because I guess, yeah, so let me uh, tell you about the two meds that people really worry about uh, and judge me for. Uh, one is Ritalin, so I take a lot of Ritalin. And the reason I take a lot of Ritalin is for two reasons. So the first is um, that um, one of the things that, um, well, well, one of the things that can happen to you when you suffer from grief and anxiety and depression is the kind of I just can't get out of bed feeling. Um, oh, my sister is so lovely. She's saying, don't listen to anybody. You're lovely, Phil you know, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to me. Okay, Phil. So like, don't listen to the rest of them when they're judging, but then listen to me because you know, I'm right. I'm like Ricky Gervais, really. Um, just not as rich. Um, and not living in Hampstead, which actually I'm sort of secretly happy about. I mean, not because Ricky Gervais lives there. Um, you know, if he came to live in Birdhaven, I'd, be, I'd quite like that. Um, because, uh, you know, I'd hopefully like see him out dog walking or something. And then, you know, because I really feel like we could be friends. But then I also feel like I could really be friends with Claire Baldwin, you know, the, the, the race horsing commentator and the lady who's always on those like um, panel shows. Um, but I don't think they'd like each other. And then it would be all awkward in social occasions, wouldn't it? You know, having to, you know, have two friends because you know, I don't have a lot of friends. You know, um, so anyway, so one of the things you judge me for is Ritalin. Um, so one of the things that happens when you have, and you can see actually the Ritalin hasn't kicked in, so I am all over the place, but two things actually happen to me and to Shannon and to Chris, 
after Josh died was one that we cannot stay awake. So left to our own devices, we pretty much can sleep like 23 hours a day. Um, and Ritalin has this lovely uh, keep you awake um, effect. Um, and the second thing is, is for all three of us again, is that, you know, essentially like one of the things that people don't tell you about when someone dies is like that it gives you ADD. <laughs> I mean, so not, not, not ADD forever. So not to diminish anyone with ADD because of the times we live in, but essentially like we can, all three of us, uh, spend eight hours a day looking at a screen or sitting in a classroom in Chris's case and the lights are on but no one's home and we don't get anything done so that is why I take the Ritalin um, because and and again this makes total sense to me because you know having a sense of purpose having a sense of something to do is one of the things that can alleviate depression and grief and all those things oh and the sun's just come up from behind the tree so we're just swapping views there for a moment right I'm sort of sitting hunched down because the sun is now in my eyes um so um I take a lot of Ritalin to keep me awake and to make me be able to do things um do anything really um and the other one that people <laughs> um, judge me for is because I take quite a lot of tranquilizers. So you will have heard me rave about Urbanol. Yay, Urbanol. We love Urbanol. Give me a thumbs up if you love Urbanol. Um, or a heart if you love epileptin. Um, and why do I take those? Well, a side effect of Ritalin is anxiety, but uh, <laughs> also I have an anxiety disorder. So when I am feeling particularly um, anxious, because I know that we're going to die and that people can be in accidents and that no one likes me and they just tolerate me and all these things that seem completely reasonable to me, um, that, that makes me quite, quite tense, you know. Um, and um, I have to be perfect. Well, I think that goes with the people watching and judging me, you know, is like I think everybody has a view on... You know, this is how Meryl Streep portrayed grieving, you know. Um, so you must do it like that too. Um, I mean, there was that last James Bond movie where there, was she Italian? I can't remember. But the last Bond girl, the Bond girl that everyone went on about because she was an old Bond girl and yay for going down with ageism. I mean, in a Bond movie. Come on, like Bond was never PC. Um, anyway, but she looked fucking amazing when she was at that uh, um, funeral so I confess that if I could look like that and uh, oh uh, Mandy I'll tell you my if I could look like that and I could walk in heels because you know the whole pig on stilts thing um, if I could walk in heels and I could look like that then I would give up the Batman t-shirt jeans um, and today I'm actually wearing Birkenstocks with Grinch socks which is it's quite a look. Um, I am taking epileptin, uh, Mandy, because it is, it is, well, I take it in two doses. So one, I take a high dose at night because it keeps me asleep. Um, so uh, I take a sleeping tablet to make me sleep because otherwise I sit and ruminate, which is, you know, where your thoughts go round and round and round. Um, and... Sleeping pills put me to sleep, but I have this sort of wake, you know, awake, asleep, awake, asleep, awake, asleep, and epileptin sort of smooths that out um, in your brain because it's actually an anti seizure med, actually an epilepsy med. And then I take smaller doses as needed uh, during the day, like yesterday. So, you know, yesterday I have a friend who has gone off her meds and was brutally unkind yesterday. So we took quite a lot of the lower dose of epileptin uh during the day to sort of you know uh calm the fuck down um oh i'm jiggling my legs i think i might need some more oh and load shedding is 
push to stage four so we could be going down any second. If I disappear, it's ESCOM, not me, sort of deciding to end it all. Uh, I have no suicidal thoughts, by the way. Um, although I do, ha I do lie in bed quite often, lying really, really still, thinking that maybe I could just disappear. So I would never commit suicide because that would create like, oh, so much admin for the family and people would be sad and da 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 da. But I do sometimes fantasize about just not ever having existed. So, um, yeah. Um, and yeah and then nobody likes me they just tolerate me so you know it is that and the weirdest thing so the people who i really have always thought just tolerated me were people at school actually um i never really felt like i'd sort of I, I, you know my friend uh, georgia and i always joke that we were d-listers at school and yet during the last year it's really been an amazing experience because um not just fellow D-listers, like A-listers have reached out to me um, and, um, uh, and, you know, really given me support, you know, during the, the last year, including last night where I had a stunning, stunning phone call with my friend Spider. So if you're watching, you're awesome, Spider. You know what? I had such a crappy day yesterday and your message just, it made me giggle and laugh and... Yeah, realize that, yeah, you, you know, <laughs> shit happens in life. And, uh, you know, so so uh, Spider was a friend of mine. He was Spider because he was immensely tall, had very long legs and arms and was just the loveliest person and still is. And, um, and uh, one of the things that he says is he calls himself totally hat stand. Um, which I thought is probably better when I'm speaking to my mother-in-law because, you know, my mother-in-law is very, very Catholic. So, you know, my word is batshit crazy. Um, he calls me handstand. Well, I think he was calling himself hat. I'm hoping he was calling himself handstand, not me handstand. But <laughs> anyway, um, but it was lovely and it cheered me up. And you are fabulous. And yeah, we all had secret crushes on you. You know, even the and especially the girls you are mean to who I'm not going to mention here um, you know give me a love heart if you think I've just been like really subtle and like protected someone's privacy there hearts hearts anybody you see you're that busy talking to each other but it's okay keep talking to each other because uh, Facebook will think I'm fabulous oh morning Ev have you landed are you back from La Francais I know by the way Ev, Ev is my sister-in-law who's also had a really really crap week so I love you so much Ev and I know it's a shit time and I know that there is nothing to say Ev lost her marvelous wonderful most glamorous woman mother who I've ever met I mean I mean not most glamorous mother most glamorous woman uh, even a week before she died she sent a photo to us and she still looked like uh, she should be on the the cover of oak she was a marvelous wonderful woman and she gave birth and raised two fabulous daughters and I'm going to try and not get all weepy now because now they make me eat weepy but Ev has said no she's just woken up I don't know where you woke up from I thought you were on a flight last night I thought you were back from France um anyway so Eva's been having a, a terrible time she has been in France and she sent me a text to say something saying something terrible had happened see note one about the accident Ev um saying that uh there wasn't space in her luggage for uh French cheese for me I know she was only joking she's she toys with me she's she's a terrible tease I know I know that come this weekend she will be driving over my oh what was that one that you bought me last time that was fabulous there eh? le, le bouchon i've forgotten how you say it oh mwah, fabulous and i i know that nobody would be so cruel even if they had to like flip and i don't know wear a hat and put it underneath nobody would be cruel enough not to bring that to me in south africa um and the last one everybody will leave me and it's a weird thing because again uh grief confirms this so not everybody because it's been a really interesting year 
But, uh, you know, one of the things I notice when I go onto Facebook these days is that nearly everything in my Facebook page is a page is, is from a page or an advert. Uh, and there's very little from actual friends. And that's for two reasons. One, because friends, like, you're dorks and you hardly ever post on Facebook anymore. So, like, get with it. Because, you know, uh, I, I really like Facebook and I like looking at Facebook and it's really annoying that every time I go on Facebook, I just get people trying to sell me um, their latest how to be good at Facebook lives um, uh, course. Uh, you know, and there's only so many I can buy. I'm broke, for God's sake. I made a thousandth of what Shannon's bonus was. Um, but actually, a lot of people did leave me. Uh, so I don't mean like leave me, leave me. But like in the last year, there's like a ton of people who um, two things happened. When Josh was sick, loads of people were busy washing their hair for that year. I mean, a whole year of hair washing. Uh, I feel particularly bitter and it. Yep, I do hold a grudge. Ev's going, you're making me feel so bad. But I know it's a ruse, Ev. I know that. I know you would never do that to me. Um, and she's going, I didn't even bring any for myself. Yeah, but I, we're not talking about you, Ev. It's my Facebook live feed. Like, we're, it's me. This is me that we're talking about, you know. Give me a thumbs up if you think it's always about me. <laughs> um, so those of you who have just joined, that is because my friend who's like, says I need to be at Facebook Live, say, like, you have to keep doing the, like, you know, give me a thumbs up if you're here. Give me a love heart if you think that was amazing. Yeah, I see you guys have got bored with the whole notion of that. Oh, no, there's a love heart coming through. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, on the day that was Josh's memorial, like loads of people who I thought were friends were, you know, hair washing, you know, uh, being on girls weekends. I don't know what the fuck they were doing, but uh, I do feel really angry and bitter and resentment. And no, I haven't let it go. And no, I'm not going to do the radical forgiveness exercises either because you are shits. Uh, <laughs> sorry, but you are. You're total shits. Um, and I'm not going to let it go and it is one of the things that I loved about Josh because when Josh first got his diagnosis and as you guys will remember we were initially told he had two months to live and there had been a kid who had been uh, I think these days we call it bullying uh, in my day we would have said that was just a shitty thing to say because uh, bullying you know, as um, a couple of my schoolmates who I've chatted to recently have told me, which again, I was oblivious to at the time. Yeah, bullying, yeah, it wasn't saying mean things back in our day. In our day, we knew what bullying really was. Anyway, <laughs> so this kid had been mean to Josh. And when he heard that Josh was going to die, Josh had said, oh, okay, thanks. And then he lay in bed and said to me and a room full of other people, that kid thinks I've forgotten to him, but I'm going to go to my grave. Never having forgiven him and he will have to live with that for the rest of his life and I pretty much like go uh, yay Georgie I, that's totally me so everyone will leave me but the weird thing is is that not everyone has leave me because then as I've mentioned like there's all these amazing people who've crept out of the woodwork so you know not that I'm advocating having a kid die you know it, it's quite a an extreme tactic but, uh, you know, when something shit happens in your life, the people who are around, the people who check on you, the people who actually send you notices, uh, uh, oh, Sonia, you're right, it was. It's the best memorial I've ever been to. Um, I've only been to about four, but I thought it was the best, you know, especially the flames. Flames! Um, you know, now when people say to me, oh, you know, somebody died, you know, so my mother-in-law, um, as I mentioned, she's very involved in the Catholic Church and she's on the committee of doing teas and cake at her church, you know, so she goes to a lot of funerals. Um, and so far, we are the only one that's had like flames coming out. So for those you guys who are watching this and did not watch the Facebook Live of his, his memorial, because, you know, we wanted all his friends from overseas to be able to watch, um, <laughs> uh, we had asked people to put tea candles as a memorial you know like you know we were you know being i don't know what's the word like you know spiritually ish you know um but we had overlooked the notion that like many tea candles together create enough heat to melt those little aluminium cases that they come in so halfway through there was this enormous explosion and then the thing that i really liked 
the best, the best part of it all was not actually the flames, but thank you, Josh, for creating the flames because that was awesome. Um, give me a thumbs up if you love flames in a memorial. Uh, <laughs> the, the, thing, the best thing actually was that the technology teacher then tried to put it, uh, um, an oil fire out with water and so then the flames got even bigger. It was fantastic. Anyway, so the tenth one is everyone will leave me. Well, that one I have to say, like, I don't worry about anymore. I'm sort of on, but you know, Ricky and I, we are, you know, as you know, we're like this now. Um, you know, uh, well, I don't know. We're probably like this, you know, because, you know, I've watched him on Netflix, so now I feel like we are, are close. Um, I, I don't think he probably feels the same way yet but give him time you know if we put enough love hearts and thumbs up on this we will go 